This video will show you how to create curved objects in AutoCAD LT, namely circles, arcs, and ellipses. Let's start with the circle command. The circle command is located on the draw panel of the home tab. You can launch it directly by clicking on the icon, or use the arrow to see more options. There are six in all. The first two methods involve selecting a center point and then specifying either the radius or the diameter. You can enter the values at the command line or the dynamic prompt, or use the mouse to define the distance. The next two methods enable you to define a circle by defining two or three points on its circumference. For example, if I want to draw a circle that touches the corners of all three squares, I can use the three-point option and select the corners. The last two methods of creating a circle involve defining tangents to the circle. You can either choose two tangent objects and a radius, or three tangent objects. For example, I can create a circle with the tangent tangent radius option by selecting the circle and one side of the square as the tangent objects and entering a radius of 0.5. I can also draw a circle that is tangent to all three of the line segments by using the three tangents option and selecting all of the lines. There are even more ways to create arcs in LT than there are ways to create circles. The ribbon icon contains 11 methods in all. The arc command is also located on the draw panel of the home tab. Like the circle command, Additional options are available in a flyout. The first is the three-point arc. To draw one, you simply select three points, the start point, a point along its curve, and an end point. The next group of options involves defining the arc's starting point, the center point, and then a third characteristic, like its end point or its included angle. For example, I'll use the start, center, angle option. After selecting my start and center points, I can define the angle. Notice that by default, the arc is drawn counterclockwise. This is because in LT, positive rotations are counterclockwise. To draw the arc in the other direction, I can enter a negative number for the included angle. The third set of options enables you to pick the arc's start and end points first, and then another property, like radius, or tangent direction. So I'll start the start end direction option and select two points for the end points of the arc. You can see that as I move the mouse around, the arc changes shape to reflect the different tangent directions. I'll use the polar tracking feature to specify a tangent angle of precisely 90 degrees. The last object grouping enables you to define an arc by its center point first, then its start point, and then a third property. It's very similar to the first group, except for the order in which you pick the points. You can also use AutoCAD LT to create ellipses and elliptical arcs. The ellipse command is available on the draw panel of the home tab. Like the circle and arc commands, Additional options are available in a flyout, but this time there are only three. The first enables you to define the ellipse by its center point and the length of its axes. You can either select points with the mouse or enter them through the command line or dynamic prompt. The second option is very similar to the first, except that you define the entire length of the first axis instead of just the difference from the center point. The second axis is still defined from the center. The final option is for creating elliptical arcs. You define the lengths of the axes in the same way you would if you were creating an entire ellipse, but instead of ending there, you specify the start and end angles for the arc. Elliptical arcs are always drawn counterclockwise, so keep that in mind when choosing your start angle.
Now you have seen how to create lines and polylines in AutoCAD LT. For more information on AutoCAD LT features and commands, please visit the LT homepage at www.autodesk.com/autocadlt.